Hello and welcome dear viewers to the another interesting topic that is gelatin crosslinking enzymes and surfactants used in the dissolution testing. This is part 2 of this video series and it will discuss in detail about the gelatin crosslinking when enzymes and surfactants are used in the dissolution testing and method development. In the last part of this video we will discuss the best practices for dissolution method development and the best practices to avoid the cross-linking. See, cross-linking is the formation of covalent bonds between the gelatin poly polymeric chains that are the peptide chains. These are strong chemical linkages and the gelatin linking, gelatin cross-linking is not a reversible process. It is irre irreversible and due to this cross-linking, the gelatin becomes insoluble. Due to this insoluble gelatin formation, the disintegration time gets increased for the formulation. The formulation may be soft gelatin capsule or hard gelatin capsule. And due to this increased disintegration time, the dissolution rate gets slower, which may also lead to dissolution failure. This cross-linking is always a variable uh, process. It is not uniform. Thus, the dissolution becomes variable due to variability of the cross-linking. Then, the main concerns with the gelatin is that cross-linking and due to cross-linking, the membrane-like structure is formed. Here is the membrane-like structure which is insoluble that is also called as pellicles. And due to pellicles, the dissolution rate gets slower. So, how to identify the cross-linking? It is through visual observations by observing the membrane or swelled insoluble gelatin mass and delayed capsule opening and slow dissolution. This is also called as pellicles. And another technique is instrumental test technique that involves NMR, DSC, FTIR, which can detect the cross linked gelatin. Then capsule switching. So, in this, test the capsules and above, observe the cross linking or slower dissolution. Then empty the capsule formulation on which the dissolution is done and it is showing the cross-linking. And empty the capsule and empty that capsule and fill the content in the fresh capsule cells. And then perform the dissolution. If the dissolution is okay, then that means the earlier formulation or earlier tested capsules are cross-linked. Then coming to the enzymes used in the Resolution testing of uh, formulations with containing gelatin like hard gelatin capsules and soft gelatin capsules. These are the pepsin, papain, bromelin and pancreatin. So pepsin shows maximum activity in the acidic pH and it is used in the limit as per the guidelines. That is not more than 750,000 units or less as per the as as uh, as per USP it is given, it is per 1000 ml or that is per liter. So for popin, popin is used when the media pH is about 5 and it is with the limit of not more than 550,000 units or less. Similarly, bromelin is used in the pH range of 3 to 6.5. See this popin and bromelin are included recent. Popin and bromelin used in the pH between 4 to 6.8. And these are selected based on the method development. So, not more than 30 gelatin digesting unit GDU are given for per liter. Then pancreatin. Pancreatin is used in the basic pH. And the protease activity of not more than 2000 units per 100 ml, per 1000 ml, that is per liter. Then coming to the Tire 1 and Tire 2 dissolution testing. So, the Tire 1 test is without enzyme in the media and Tire 2 test is with enzyme in the media if the dissolution failure is observed due to the presence of the cross-linking or pellicle formation. So, examples are given here. It is Medostorin soft gelatin capsule and Enzalutamide soft gelatin capsule. The dissolution is taken from the OGD dissolution method from USFDA website. 
tire 1 is deionized water with 0.5% polish orbit 20 and with tire 2 the same media is there with pepsin as a enzyme. Similarly for enzalutamide tablets tire 1 medium contained CTAP 0.3% in 0.1 normal SCM and tire 2 medium contains pepsin. Then coming to the surfactant effect. So this enzyme activity is affected by the media solvent, media pH, presence and type of the surfactants into the media. Pepsin is used in the media, media of acidic pH between 1 to 6, 6, 1 to 6 .8. and generally in 0.1 normal Pepsin is used. Then pancreatin is used in the media of basic pH between 6 to 8. Puffin and bromelain are used in the pH between 4 to 6.8. Pretreatment stage is provided for media containing the surfactant. So this pretreatment stage we, we are going to study in detail. Here one thing is very very important to note that why the enzyme and surfactant both are used into the media. This is why because the formulation may contain insoluble material. And also that insoluble API is filled into the capsules and that capsule shell may show cross-linking. So for dissolution testing, the surfactant is also needed and the enzymes are also needed. But if there is a interaction between the enzyme and the surfactant, that time the pretreatment step is included into the dissolution test. And in dissolution test tire 2, the enzyme is added in the media and dissolution is run for a short time. For example, around 10 to 15 minutes or 20 minutes based on the method development. This pretreatment is with the enzyme. In this pretreatment, the enzyme digests the gelatin and that uh, gelatin shell opens. And then in the second step, surfactant is added so that the dissolution can be continued. So in tire 2, the enzyme is added in the media and dissolution is run for a short time. This is pretreatment time with enzyme and then the surfactant is added in the dissolution testing and it is continued. The stepwise and sequential use of enzyme and surfactant is to avoid the interaction. In first step, enzyme breaks or digests the cross-linking and opens the shell or coating to start the API release. And in the second step, surfactant works to start the API dissolution and release. That means surfactant gives the waiting activity or surfactant activity and that's why the dissolution is proceeded. Then here example is shown for pretreatment. Example is silicoxid capsules. Here tire 1 medium is 0 0.04 molar tribasic sodium phosphate pH 12 with 1% SLS. So this is very insoluble molecule that's why 1% SLS is used here and the pH is 12. So in tire 2 initial medium 750 ml of simulated gastric fluid is taken which includes pepsin and the pretreatment is done for 20 minutes. While stirring add 180 ml of appropriate concentration of SLS solution for the final concentration of 1% SLS. Add about 70 ml of point of 1.2 normal NaOH to adjust the pH to 12. Then the time points are 10, 20, 30, 45 and 60 minutes. So here up to 20 minutes pretreatment is there and from 30, 45 and from 30 minutes to 45 and 60 minutes the release will be checked. The pretreatment time with enzyme is also considered into the total dissolution time. This is not the separate time. Up to 20 minutes pretreatment will be there and onwards the API will be released. This is the example without pretreatment. Midostorin soft gelatin capsule and enzalutamide soft gelatin capsule as we have studied earlier. So if there is no interaction found between the enzyme and the surfactant, then pretreatment is not required. So here without pretreatment, the dissolution can be run. Then coming to the specifications or routine testing. If the dissolution failure in S1 stage is that is without enzyme that is tire 1 with 6 unit fails due to the evidence of cross-linking or helical formation 
then dissolution to be proceeded to tire two media with enzyme with enzyme or with enzyme and the surfactant if retreatment is there and it will not go to the directly to the s2 stage and if the failure in s1 stage is due to the presence of the cross linking then it will not go into the criteria of significant change significant change criteria for the stability samples if dissolution failure is at tier 2 with enzyme in the media then dissolution to be proceeded to s2 stage in tier 2 only s2 stage will be there if dissolution failure at tier 2 with enzyme in the media with s2 stage that means 12 units then dissolution to be proceeded to s3 stage that means total s1 s2 and s3 6 plus 6 plus 12 will become 24 units and then the normal criteria of s1 s2 s3 will be applied but always remember that failure in the s1 stage without enzyme tier 1 will not uh, go to the s2 stage and it is not a failure then method development what is the method development required for the medias containing gelatin medias containing enzyme for the products with gelatin capsule shells or gelatin coating so dissolution failure if observed in the de development samples or stability samples during development then the method to be developed with and without enzymes or surfactant with and without the pre treatment so this method should involve the uh, justification why the enzymes are being used the formulation samples with cross linking to be used for the method development cross linking in the samples can be due to the storage at accelerated conditions like high temperature high humidity that is forced cross linking so you can perform the forced cross linking studies on the samples or if the stability samples are showing cross linking those samples can also be used for the method development cross linking also can be in, uh, induced into the formulation by uh, spiking the formaldehyde into the film material and then this, this formaldehyde treated film material is filled into the capsules and stored for some time then the cross linking may happen or sometimes the filled capsules may be exposed to the formaldehyde vapors so that the force cross linking can happen and these samples are given for the method development the enzyme concentrations to be used as per the regulatory requirements and the pharmacopeia recommendations so if the enzymes are used in more than the recommended levels then strong justification is required to justify the amount of enzyme then coming to the best practices and problems with enzymes if the dissolution failure is not due to the cross linking then enzyme addition cannot be justified see clearly it is mentioned that if dissolution failure is not due to the enzymes uh, not due to the cross linking then enzymes cannot be used media containing enzymes should be used immediately and should not be hold for longer time as these enzymes may lose their activity and that's why though you are using the enzymes still you may not get the drug release Papain and bromelain can be selected for pH media between pH 4 to 6.8, and the selection of the papain or bromelain is based on the method development on the cross-link samples. Cross-linking is a irreversible process, and it is also a variable process. Every time you cannot get the same cross-linking. That's why proper capsule cell selection. formulation excipient selection manufacturing method selection and packaging can be optimized for the prevention many of the time uh, some gelatin manufacturers are there which which claims that the gelatin provided by them like succinated gelatin or fish bone fish fish gelatin these treated gelatins are there which are less prone to the cross linking so these can be tried also the hpmc capsules can be tried so that there will not be any cross linking 
but it depends on the type of the formulation and the requirements then surfactants may show impact on the enzymatic activity so always there should be a study on pretreatment stage requirement or it is not required that will depend on case by case basis and it will depend on the actual method development onto the samples that may be cross link samples so this is regarding the second part of the video series of cross linking in the gelatin formulation what is cross linking pre treatment method development and best practices which are required to be there for getting the best method that is best dissolution method for the products containing gelatin and showing cross linking so for this i have referred uspp usfd orange book and dissolutiontech.com so dissolution topic is very vast topic and keep watching these videos to have the in depth understanding thanks for watching the video